I'm Ola Barquist. And I'm Roman London. We're physicians at the University Hospital in Lund, and we are really into Central Lines. Welcome to our Central Line Academy. To make a long story short, in our opinion, Central Lines should be placed using in-plane needle visualization. That is, aligning the ultrasound field of view so you visualize the cannula at all times, particularly the tip. We can see it as it punctures the vessels, and we can see to it that it doesn't deviate into the artery or the pleura. Currently, the most common method of central line insertion is the out-of-plane view. This is, of course, a technique you need to master, but it shouldn't be your first choice. Now, the next point is a bit controversial, but we believe your central lines should be subclavian. This is the goal and ambition. It will require a lot of practice, and we're going to show you how. We recommend you learn it under expert supervision and that you first become an expert on IJ cannulation. However, the subclavian is always our first hand choice for a couple of reasons. To begin with, the right jugular vein is a prized piece of real estate. By using the subclavian vein for your central line, the IJ is available for a dialysis, ECMO, or PA catheter that your patient may need should he or she become critically ill. There is solid data showing that subclavian lines result in fewer cases of thrombosis and they have fewer infectious complications. Then there is the matter of comfort. Comfort for the patient. Now the neck is a very sensitive area and awake patients may find cannulation very distressing. Would you prefer to be stabbed by a 3 inch steel cannula in the soft tissue of the neck or would you prefer it under the clavicle? Once the line is in place, we hear from our patients that it's much nicer to have infusion lines away from the body rather than up towards the face. This is important. With the standard IJ approach, this is something that you see all the time. Dressing, peeling away, and it causes discomfort and infections and extra work for staff. Here are some examples of patients who have passed through our ICU with IJ lines, where we would have preferred a subclavian approach. Compare it to the subclavian line. A subclavian also improves physician comfort. It is much better to stand by the side of the bed rather than wrangling ourselves past infusion pumps and ventilators towards the head of the bed. And finally, you need to practice subclavian line placement regularly, otherwise you will be unable to perform it when you really need it. As with any invasive procedure, there are potential pitfalls with the subclav, and you need to be aware of the risks. Hitting the subclavian vein can feel like sailing between Scylla and Charybdis. On the one side, you have the subclavian artery. Should you puncture it, it may be difficult to compress under the clavicle. On the other side, you have the lung, and a puncture may cause a pneumothorax. Special care should be taken with the intubated positive pressure ventilated patient, where a puncture can easily escalate into a tension pneumothorax. This is a potentially lethal complication. These risks can be effectively mitigated by the use of proper in-plane technique, visualizing the cannula at all times. But you need to use good judgment when to avoid a subclav, when to abort a subclav attempt, and when to call for help. Finally, your central lines should be right-sided, as the right side comes with one critical advantage. It allows for the supraclavicular fossa view and is going to change your practice. You can confirm that the guide wire is in the right place before threading the catheter. Likewise, a dislocated guide wire can be repositioned in real time. If you're looking for a quick overview, maybe just before scrubbing up and approaching a patient, go to interanus.org or our YouTube channel and see our 4 minute long top notch quality guides. If you really want to learn central lines, take this free open access medical education class. Over the course of these videos, we will teach you every aspect of placing central lines. There are big ticket items and there are small details. Some of the techniques have a steep learning curve and will take time, commitment and effort on your part. We are going to break it down into its components, teach the pitfalls, tricks of the trade and give you the tools to learn this. If you master this, you will be a better clinician, better prepared for hard to place central lines and able to take better care of your patients.